in middle school, my dad sat me down and told me in his thick Arab accent, Bicky, we have to find something you're good at so we can build your resume and you can get into college. I remember doing the math with him. Well, I'm smart, right? And I can swim. No, 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 Bicky. No, 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 no. You cannot. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. So supportive. Frantically that summer, I tried a plethora of sports from soccer to diving. I made a list of clubs that I would for sure join, for I was told they looked good for college, even though I didn't know what that meant at the time. My every move was for pleasing this entity I knew so little about. After my freshman year, I finally found some clubs and activities that were fulfilling me outside of school. I began to forget about that beast called college and just did what was making me happy. However, I witnessed many a friend who seemed to have 10 million things going on in their lives. They were always talking about that regional tournament here or that internship there. I thought I was for sure missing the mark. And there came my concern. Should extracurricular activities only serve to further a student's package, or do they have a greater purpose? In order to divulge into this dilemma, we must use the rotary four-way test. Then the true power of the resume will become clear. Primarily, is it the truth that many students acquire auxiliary activities to make themselves seem more appealing for prospective universities? In a recent study done by the American Freshman Survey, 82% of high school seniors admitted to participating in extra community service and activities during their senior year. Although many seniors are generally altruistic, a vast amount of those interviewed explained their struggle in making themselves shine in comparison to the other millions of applicants to university. Stephen Roy Goodman, an educational consultant in Washington, D.C., elaborated that colleges are rewarding uniqueness and students are simply providing what the colleges are asking for. The pressure on a high school senior is immense. I look at my lunch period and see hundreds of intelligent, talented, and athletic students, and I think, wow, how can I compare? Nowadays, with top school acceptance at less than 10%, every student is looking for that edge to put them beyond the pack. That could be a test score, a state title, or a national team. It's all a race to succeed, and thus students are only using extracurriculars to boost their resumes. Furthermore, is this fair to all concerned? Every year, 2.5 million applicants apply to college. That's 2.5 million teens hoping for acceptance into their dream school, or the full scholarship to their parents' alma mater, or the chance to escape their homes and experience a brand new culture. With a 2.5 million applicant pool, how can colleges excavate the exceptional eggs from the average? That's where extracurriculars come into play. Sure, you have a perfect SAT score, but what do you do in your free time? What are your passions? Do you go back to the community? Where are you going? It's fair for colleges to hold students accountable to these questions. But it's not fair for students to completely change themselves and their loves to fit the cookie cutter college profile. In a recent NPR interview, Andrew Flagel, the senior vice president of students and enrollment at Brandeis University, recalled an especially saddening meeting he had with a mother and her son. The mother told Flagel that her son needs to quit crew, take more AP classes, and join the debate team, because that's what's going to get him into college. The son, tears in his eyes, could only say, but I love crew. Sacrificing joy for potential success should not be the goal of one senior year. Moreover, re-emphasizing passion over versatility will promote goodwill and better friendships. The ability to devote oneself to something one adores is much more fulfilling than trying to please some unknown entity. 
No longer will high school be a rat race between the successful and unsuccessful. It'll be a group of students coming together with different passions and talents, excelling in their own fields of choice. In recent years, admissions directors like Sean Logan of the Phillips Academy in Andover have stopped looking for the student who can check off 25 different boxes. Logan says he's looking for those who have made great accomplishments in few places they truly enjoy. Without the pressure to conquer a billion clubs and sports, high school will prepare students for a more focused and successful college experience. This new outlook answers the final question to the Rotary four-way test. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Yes. Although there are 2.5 million applicants to college, there are not 2.5 million of the same talents, backgrounds, and skills. Extracurriculars are not the only thing that makes a student unique. Without the ferociously competitive mindset that many parents and students have, students can finally excel in their passions, and colleges will find the perfect candidates for their programs. I wish I could go back and tell middle school me that it would all work out eventually, and maybe I wasn't as big as a failure as my father thought. I didn't have to fill my life with empty clubs and activities because the right school would want me for my passions, not my resume. Thank you.